perspective. Yes, I did that. Got it. All right. Good to go. Let's right. rock and roll here. So the 6th of April, 2023, Hyperledger Supply Chain and Trade Finance Special Interest Group illuminating session today on what projects we want to work on for the rest of 2023, or at least for part of 2023. Uh, so thanks everybody for joining either live here and working through the problems associated with Zoom that Tomas will dig into. Thank you, Tomas, as well as uh, for those folks who are listening who are recording here. Um, so what we're gonna do here is let me uh, first share my screen here and show an agenda. And everyone, it looks like there are several people who posted the link to, to LinkedIn that they couldn't get in. So I've just shared the revised link there as well. Okay. We may see a few more people join. Okay, that's good. Let's let me get to the agenda here and then share that screen. Let's do that. Okay. So first off, antitrust policy, anything we share, please don't share anything confidential here. And also everyone who has joined and even the people in recording, if you want to come back, you're all welcome and you're, we value all of your inputs and thoughts and uh, ideas here. So uh, upcoming events, uh, April 20th, free GS1, which is obviously very important from a supply chain perspective, visibility summit. Visibility is obviously the continuing hot topic in supply chain there. So we have that um, announcement. Eric, when was it? Last week, two weeks ago, you uh, talked in Toronto at the Hyperledger Toronto and talked about supply chain. Anything you want to say about that? It was fun. I met people. Okay. Yeah. So no, I mean, the, 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 we had a bunch of folks uh, in the room. It was an in-person event, which was great that to actually see and meet people. Um, a lot of technically inclined people as well who are interested in supply chain, which was fun. Because in these calls, I think we're pretty much more on the on the supply chain side. Uh, so the technical community seems to be interested, which uh, is exciting. And uh, and yeah, met uh, met some folks and uh, had a little glass of wine at the end of the evening and uh, enjoyed it very much. Some okay. Tuscan wine, I suppose, uh, Rick. No, unfortunately not, Andrea. But uh, hold tight, you, we'll have that in a couple of weeks. You, you you learned nothing so far. Come on. <laughs> oh man, now we all got to represent our wine <laughs> there. Okay, yeah. good. Thanks, Eric. Um, there. Um, we were going to have Atul Anand, who's a PhD candidate, um, has put something out on the wiki. He has a survey as part of his uh, research here: adoption of blockchain and supply chain management. Uh, probably due to some of the difficulties. He hasn't been able to join us today, so we'll look to have him on in future. If you go back to the wiki pages, you can see his post is probably about a month or so ago. Um, a number of us have taken the survey, um, provided some feedback to, to him. It was probably, I don't know, Eric, I, I know you took it. I think it was, it was probably like 10, 15 minutes, something like that to go through. Not even. Five Not even. Yeah. yeah. So I'd encourage everyone to uh, do that and help a tool out as he's uh, doing the work there to hopefully become a PhD doctor, a tool then. Okay, so that moves us to uh, discussion. And today there's no presentation. This is really a discussion. I'm glad everyone uh, has joined here. Uh, here. So we've talked pre on previous sessions um, you've seen a little bit on the wiki going back and forth here. And what we're what we're planning right now is to do an ebook project very similar for for this specific SIG here, very similar to the initial one that was done uh, on central bank digital currencies. And let's let me see if I can share if if it'll pop up and share that screen. Yes. So there one, there's one, there's actually two of them out there. Uh, the first one was done on central bank digital currencies. And we just want to give everyone an example of what this thing looks like. Because you hear the word ebook and you think lots of text, 70, 80 pages, et cetera, et cetera. And it's more of a high level, get people, one, interested in Hyperledger, two, that there's value, valuable case studies out there in, uh, in blockchain with supply chain and trade finance. And so you see here, 
it, the kind of the structure of these ebooks here. Uh, introduction, a little bit about Hyperledger Foundation, a little bit about, you know, this is where there's going to be some work here, a little bit about, in our case, it'd be supply chain trade finance, what are some of the value props, et cetera, et cetera, um, for blockchain and specifically the Hyperledger projects there. And then these community work with CDBCs and Hyperledger CDBCs, in our case, again, supply chain and trade finance, what are some successful examples out there that we want to highlight? And, you know, we already have a few that have presented on these calls that we should be able to share, like the DLT Labs story with Walmart Canada. I think, Andrea, um, the story with the UAE Trade Connect, that was a great story and there was value associated with that, um, et cetera. So this is the flow of the idea here. We're hoping just to kind of a timeline here. I, I said earlier through the rest of the year, ideally this is something and you'll be able to, the link is in the agenda. So I'm gonna go back to the agenda here. The link is in the agenda. So go click on that and you can download the ebook. Um, we're thinking that with an appropriate set of people working on this, that we would be able to complete it in good form by the end of June. Now. Things always take longer than we think, but the goal here is not to have this drag out to December, not to have this be turned into something intergalactic that takes us to December or September or something like that. Hopefully, we know Andrea can enjoy his August vacation uh, when he's off for the whole month, Mr. Europe um, there. Sorry, sorry, Andrea, it was too easy. Oh, forget about that. I'll be here. <laughs> it was too easy. It was too yeah, easy. That's too but easy. I mean, yeah. the rest of this country is going to be off. Yeah, there, there you go. Um, so, so anyway, so, yeah. So the goal is, again, not to have it drag out for a long time or have a, create a lot of extra work here. It's let's follow the template, the pattern that's been established, and then drive that out. So let me stop there and see what questions, what thoughts uh, people have, or if Alicia, um, Andrea, or um, Tomas, or Daniela, I see you've raised your hand. You're welcome to uh, say something also about this. Yeah, so I agree with the time frame, um, and we want to keep it, you know, as you know, not as intensive for all of you as possible. The other thing is take a look at the India uh, regional chapter, the India regional ebook, which really highlighted the work of the India regional chapter. I want to make sure that this also highlights the work of the supply chain trade finance special interest group and drives people to the SIG and drives people to the work that the SIG is doing. Um, and, um, you know, so where the CBDC ebook was not tied into a SIG or a chapter or anything, right? It was about specific use cases. The India regional chapter was tied about, you know, um, also highlighting um, uh, members in the region, but primarily and importantly, the India regional chapter and driving people to that community. And I want to do the same thing for the supply chain trade finance. Thing. Good. Thanks, Danielle. That's, that's, those are good points that I didn't cover there. Uh, you know, we've all, we're always looking for additional talent to uh, join the, the, uh, our, our, our group here as well as all the people that have been part of it and the work that they've done highlighting that, that is also a nice nice uh, benefit for this. Anybody else have any uh, thoughts before we maybe transition into uh, what do we need to do? Hey, Tom, it's Alicia. I just, to piggyback on what Daniela was saying, one easy way to really push people or point people in the direction of the SIG is as we choose which companies to highlight, we already have a library of video presentations from past guests. So we can make sure to include those and then have that link and that'll bring more people onto the wiki. Good, good. Yes, that, that those links. And then the other thing, I, I'll bring it up since you bring it up now. Uh, Daniela, since she's responsible overall for Hyperledger Foundation, she, as well as Tomas, have visibility even to projects that we don't have. And they've shared some of those uh, with us, and we would be able to set, kind of take those and maybe segment it out based on however we want so that we're not just trying to come up with things out of the thin air. I mean, 
what we're really looking for is to represent projects that have had some success in, in real life. And because that's going to give us more bang for the buck. And I guess the other thing here, I don't know if Pranub's on here, let's, uh, but we, we think about these projects that we want to represent at a business level. But if we could represent a one or two, and here's the technical successes that happen with it, we could provide some value associated with this document also. So it doesn't all have to be, here was the ROI, we were able to reduce costs by X, or we were able to increase revenue by Y out there. If we could say some technical successes, that would also be good. Hey, we, we use Hyperledger Firefly or whatever here, and here's why that was a benefit to help us get it out faster there. Let me uh, stop there. Anything, anything else, anybody else want to share? So the shake your head, Tom, right now, who wants to work on an ebook? Volunteers. <laughs> well, I, I'm in for sure here. I'm Just in, obviously. Throwing <laughs> it out there to the other folks on the call. I'm in too, right over there. Uh, Pranup? Great. It's my very first I, time here, folks. So I am going to wait for a couple more meetings before I help you out, if that's all right. Of course. That's quite all right. Marina, you, would you I've like done, to introduce yourself? I was just going to say that. What you could do, Marina, is introduce yourself. I, I sure can. Uh, nice to meet you. I stumbled uh, by an accident on this group because I am uh, starting a company in um, uh, supply chain that deals with uh, invoice optimization and payments. And I got a green light from the National Science Foundation in the United States to submit for a phase one grant, but it needs to be, um, the application needs to be built on um, a distributed ledger. And I don't know so much about distributed ledger. Um, so I'm trying to learn as much as I possibly can. And you guys have some use cases uh, that might be in line with what I'm trying to do. So. I ended up here. Welcome. Yeah, welcome. You're welcome, Marina. By the way, wonderful oh. name. I like it very much. It's Thank my you. mother's name. <laughs> so I appreciate oh, wow. it a lot. Yeah. Thank you. Well, that, oh, that's great. Well, we certainly, as you heard earlier, Marina, uh, we have a number of videos from pr past uh, sessions that you can watch, uh, as well as there's probably other stories that are going to come out here as we do this ebook work here so we'll 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 appreciate any work that you, any help that you can provide and we as a group and we're very open if you want to get us on the phone some other time outside of this we're happy to share what we know um out there yeah i would love to and um i tend to volunteer a lot of my time and never say no so i if you know i could be of help yes we'll join the club <laughs> <laughs> yes sir Okay. Anybody else out there? No, can, I, can you talk I think a little you about count the them, structure man. of the ebook. What, what what are you looking to produce? I mean, I, I heard there's one from India that we could go reference as another one, but is this like a a, a chapter for each author, topic specific, case study specific? Yeah. What, what's what's the the structure? Well, let, let's. So the structure is this right here. What I'm sharing: introduction, Hyperledger Foundation, and then we'll talk about open source and supply chain and trade finance, a little bit about hyperledger projects that are applicable in this space, and then the community work, right? What our group is doing, as well as here's what some success stories are. That's the hyperledger around the globe section there. Tom, then, it might be useful to people who haven't seen it already if you click through, because I, I know for a lot of us thinking ebook, it meant, like we had discussed before, a lot, a lot of writing, whereas the format used for this one, it's a bunch of one page topics. Let, let me one do it. page with links to other, with yeah, links thank to other you. resources. Let, let me do it. Let me do it this way. Mm -hmm. I'm going to open this here because I have the India one. I was looking for the CBDC one before I uh, got on here and I don't, don't have that one downloaded. Can you see the screen here of Hyperledger Foundation in some nice green circle? No, uh, we're still seeing no, your white yeah. screen. Okay. Still seeing the new Hyperledger in Action ebook, and if you just click through on the English on that, it downloads in a few seconds. 
Yeah, well, we'll do it. We'll do it this way. I'll just do okay. the one since Daniela brought it up, and I have it on my screen here. And we there we go. There that you go. Good thumb. Okay, beautiful. So th this one is probably closer to what uh, we're thinking here, and you see the same number of, of topics here. And what they did is they talked through, and this is this is what uh, Alicia was getting at is the, these aren't deep, dense text type of eBooks here. It's really around getting a high, given a high level. Daniela, there you are in all your glory there. More like a magazine. It's more, yeah, it's more like a magazine. It's not quite a, a marketing piece, right? But it's probably closer to a marketing piece, if you guys are familiar with that, as opposed to a, you know, a NIST white paper that's 100 pages on a topic. So a lot of graphics, a lot of ideas. Let me go through here. And then what they chose to do is let me get down a little bit as I'm scrolling through. Hey, here's the contributions from the Hyperledger India chapter. So we want to say contributions from the Hyperledger supply chain and trade finance group. You know, here's, here's what we've been doing out there. Right. Danielle, yeah, Daniela just wrote into the notes for the India book, we didn't highlight case studies, but rather members. For supply chain, we want to highlight case studies like the CBDC one. It's a nice yes. one too. Good, good point. Thank you for uh, going after the chat there and keeping keeping us updated on that. But what I wanted to share, though, is let me scroll down. There's and the who's, the, who's the audience for the, uh, for the paper? Yeah. So okay, let me just do one thing here. And then if somebody wants to, ah, you'd think it'd be easier here. Okay, here, here's a page here. This would look like. So at least as we've conceived it, the page would be for managers, executives in supply chain and trade finance for them to understand the value that blockchain could bring and specifically Hyperledger projects could bring to make their projects go. Um, we we have not thought of this as a technical document for, you know, lead developers or somebody like that. Got it. Okay. So here's an example. Instead of WePro, I mean, use Hyperledger India member, we would have Walmart Canada, for instance, right? And DLT Labs in this. And we would if you have a very short blurb on what this is here's here's something that somebody says about here's the value we got from it and then we would have links to for instance the session that we did with dlt labs where they talked about the walmart canada story for instance here so again it's it's writing a paragraph michael and, and, a, and a little bit of getting a quote and then some linkages to relevant locations following that. Does that help, Michael? Yes, the, the overview is is very helpful. Thank you for taking the time to be able to take a look at it. Sure thing. Absolutely. And, you know, may, maybe, well, maybe what we'll do is let's put in what we can put in the wiki, the link to and, both of these. Yeah. And, and hey, Tom, um, yep. I worked with yep. Tomas to put a template together for you. Can he just walk you through it because I think it'll be helpful for everybody to just visualize the mix of the two and save you yeah. some time um in doing yeah. that. Tomas, yeah. if you have that exactly. ready to go, then let's let you show I you have it ready to go, Tom. Uh oh well, now I can see everyone's here. Hi Sophia. Hi Jeff. And there Hi, we go. Can you see my screen? Yep. Yes. Uh, yes. let me maybe just, it's a little bit big. Let me just, share. yeah, just do a share, share screen. If you just do yeah. it, like a presentation, Tomas, you should be able to. You mean like this? It. Yeah. There we go. Um, okay. So this is, you know, it's the template, uh, prepared already. It's, you know, really just a high level. So you can see how, uh, it should look like. Um, so, <clears throat> 
Right now, as Tommy already pointed out, so we have the inter introduction, Hyperledger Foundation, blockchains for supply chains, supply chain special interest groups, and so on. So I don't just uh, read from it. And then uh, we come down to the supply chain use cases. So, right, and that's then, you know, we already talked with sort of use cases should be there, should be uh, in production or very late POC, and with some, ideally with some ROIs that we have, and then pointers to the videos that were presented to the six and so on. Um, so we just go quickly uh, through it. So right introduction, we do have sort of like a template one because it's a Hyperledger introduction. Um, what is Hyperledger? I think it's quite self-explanatory. And then we are going to the blockchain for supply chain. And this one is much more specific to, to what uh, this uh, particular ebook would be about, right? So we have um, some of the topics of why blockchain can be used for supply chains. Um, here is about the uh, special uh, special interest groups in particular, right? And this it's a good way, you know, to make people enthusiastic about joining. And um, you know, we'll use some of the newer presentations. We can have uh, the links to the supply chain and trade finance uh, YouTube channel, so people can always see what's going on here, and obviously the link to the wiki as well. Uh, this is just what what remained here. It's it's really a template just for um, to have an idea. Um, India chapter yes should be uh, replaced. Then uh, I'm not sure if we have any mentorships uh, this year, but this could be something that we could include as well. Um, this page, uh, Hyperledger projects again it should be like a general, uh, uh, you know, template about the project. And then on the next page we do have the Hyperledger project. If you'd like to have specifically the ones that are related to some of the supply chain uh, use cases that will be presented later on. Um, <clears throat> then uh, we have the community work with Hyperledger. So here, you know, we do have case studies and we do in fact have already a couple of case studies related to supply chain uh, and trade finance written. So we would need to link them uh, there as well and basically just talk about what the community is doing within the supply chain. Um, and here, there, now we go for the supply chain uh, use cases uh, over there. So this is where we start to put some meat on the bones. Uh, and here it's already a description, right? So it's just a four or five sentence explanation of the use case. Um, and the content should already be, that's what we talked about earlier, Tom, uh, that should be already public information. Uh, and we wouldn't, in, at this stage, do any new uh, content. Um, and you know, here let me, is the... let me just add on to what Tomas is saying. So mm -hmm. I originally heard this. I was thinking, okay, we're going to have to do interviews <clears> and <throat> build a lot of stuff. I mean, the idea here, as Tomas said, is utilize existing content, a list uh, existing um, existing success stories, as opposed to going out there and, and building all this anew. At least, at least Correct. for this. this this iteration of this, you know, eventually maybe we'll get there and we'll want to do deep dives, et cetera, et cetera. But that's not the purpose of this right now. But Tom, Daniela did add that if there are use cases that are not in the broader media, uh, we could highlight those as well. Yeah. Something yeah, that we've talked about already, right? So yeah, the, the this, key, this the key, a, oh, sorry. Yeah, oh, I'm sorry, Michael. I, I didn't, go ahead, Michael. Oh, no, this is actually Jeff. Oh, Jeff, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Um, why don't you go ahead, Daniel? No, I was going to say, it's just, we, it's not deep research. We want to pointers to the original source of content. That could be original source of content that Hyperledger published. It could be a original source of content that, you know, GBBC published. It could be original source of content that the media published or um, some other. Or a standards um, body. Or... Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. What, what I don't want is I don't want to create original um, source content for this specific thing. It should be okay. original in the sense that we're presenting, you know, X amount of case studies and we're presenting the work that the supply chain SIG is doing um, and um, links to the videos you all have recorded and global forum videos and um, other types of resources. Um, if someone wants to really understand what's happening in supply chain, this would be something that would pull up and um, spend hours going down the rabbit holes, hopefully. <laughs> so, 
you you guys did a big favor for me or Andre did about a year and nine months ago now I, I was invited to present what we called the TUID the transport unit identification number and we, we did this in one of the the supply chain sigs early on and that same concept of the TUID has now been accepted by a technical committee of the International Standards Organization to be turned into a, a, a standard for creating transport unit identifiers. And there's some white papers that were submitted with you guys early on as kind of the first distribution point of it. Is that the sort of stuff you'd want to be able to, to showcase here or, or that and kind of where it's where it's going from here? Or are you talking more, I mean, in the hybrid of the, the use case and the people, I, I just, would that fit for you? I, I, my, my, my gut feel is that it's still early, Michael. Now, if somebody's taken that standard and applied it in a way and they got business value out of it, then then we'd want to talk about that. Yeah. I mean, what, what, ECMA was at, what ECMA has asked for, which is the standards body that runs the TC technical committee for this standard, is to be able to run case studies where, where there is information from the industry where they say let's have this run in parallel to what we're doing at the moment where it doesn't disrupt our workforce but we understand what implementation looks like and we write a case study about it it i mean that, that was six months ago as their request so that the standard can be refined based off of input from the user community yeah i mean that's yeah. how standards work you know that they, they don't they don't run projects inside of them that they, they they try to align with other right. organizations that are 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 seeking similar outcomes right yeah and back to a comment made earlier about the roi or some sort of tangible evidence of success there Let, let's 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 put it in the parking lot because i mean absolutely the idea makes sense whether it's right for this probably not but let's see as this evolves maybe it does come back to it is, yes. is, is my gut feel so, Tom, I mean, what is the use cases? You're, what, how, what, what kind of you, I'm, I'm looking at the screen because I'm doing something parallel to this actually right now with another group. And I did this for sure with more in the climate accounting and action SIG. He's actually got an, he actually has a thing out there on that on that website that has six million visitors um, about the solution about carbon accounting through yep. um, Hyperledger. So Sherwood Moore has a whole thing out there now that that we put out there. I'm doing something similar to supply chain out there right now around use cases. And, but um, you have a thing up there that says this should be contents already written and public, no need for new content through interviews. What does that mean? If, the, if there's something we can link, the way I'll describe it, and I'll let Thomas, Tomas, and uh, Daniel, uh, actually, I'll let you guys, I'll let you guys <laughs> Tomas, go for it. Yeah. Okay. No, Jeff, just to, to, um, to make it clear, it was because when we had these initial disc discussions, discussions, Tom and I were um, also, um, you know, talking if we need to create original content. And Daniela also just mentioned that this is not basically the point of this ebook. It's more to provide a high-level overview of the use cases that are out there mm -hmm. and provide the pointers for the people to go and see, you know, and, and explore. Uh, further if they're interested, right? Okay. And for example, if you see on the bottom here, we have a case study, we have a member webinar, um, you know, and these are basically the pointers. It's not the right one because it's just an example, but, you know, here is Edmund. He's a CTO at the Global Shipping Business Network, and we do have both case study and a member webinar with them. So um, people, you know, could always go to one of these links and explore uh, this solution uh, further if they want to. Okay, I just wondered how maybe what I'm doing for another site may, may help. I'm getting a requested use cases for our people that have done successful use cases around supply chain and trade finance. So I'm getting flooded with okay. responses from this oh. thing and, and I'm sorting them out. And um and I maybe I'll shoot this by you, Tom, or something. Um yeah. when I get these in because it would be great. Get, yeah. Yeah, yeah. The only problem I did is I put it out there and I didn't specify hyperledger. So I'm getting these things pouring in oh. and I'm having to sort through it. So I may redo yeah. it and resend yeah. it. But it may be available for all these use cases is 
it's just it, it goes out there off of this uh, request site, uh, and there's millions of people that look at this thing, and I'm getting flooded with responses. So okay, um, and, I'm and, trying to sort through them right now. Yeah, and, and Jeff, I think it's the the I can't remember the the place that you were talking about with the six million uh, members there, but I remember looking at it, and if they have the original content there that we could link to. And they, they're they will they will when we put it out there yes. yeah so so that that could be yeah that would be something and, and probably, hyperledger is actually a membership a member community of that big website good good so we're, we're good um so they're, they're linked together you want to mention it uh right now i can't remember the name of it. oh it's, it's called blockchain industry group.org and hyperledger is part of it um and okay. it just it, it's a Big organization where people put in a lot of information around blockchain solutions, blockchain technologies. Uh, there's that's yeah. record as part of this Microsoft. Um, so I work with the CEO on this thing, and that's how we get Sherwood's climate accounting stuff all out there. Um, Good. Good. Okay. Good. And since you since you brought that up, and you talk about how you're uh, surveying the field here. Maybe now is a good time to switch to what what needs to be done, what roles need to be filled here, in in accomplishing this goal. And before and in a, I'll say four that well three that I I can think of. Uh, one is research, figuring out who who we want to represent. Right? Who who are the who are the better players that we say, yeah, this is a great story that we want to share with others. Right? Some are obvious, but there's some hidden gems out there that we'd like to find and try to share out there. There's going to be need to be some writing that will be done, even though it's not a lot of writing, right? We're not writing the great American novel. It's still, there will need to be some writing to follow this template here. And then there's, there'll be need to be some editing at the end here uh, with this. So I see research, writing and editing. And then Tomas, Daniela, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, you have via Hyperledger some folks who can make this all look nice and pretty and polished and all that kind of stuff. That's not something that we need. Yeah, we, we'll make it look nice. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> that, that's yeah. very helpful. Yeah. <laughs> make, making nice and user interfaces are not, is not my forte. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Good. So, so um, the folks earlier on, I mean, I guess one one thing that could be helpful here, and so we have the next our next session two weeks from now, and my thought is here that we take the next two weeks and maybe it's a research here for and have each person come back or anybody who can come back with two or three options that they think would be appropriate to share here. Um, no writing necessary, no editing necessary, just, hey, here's two or three case studies that we think would be successful in, in, or not successful, are successful and that others would love to hear about, whether that's the obvious ones or the hidden gems I talked about. So let me throw that out there and see if if that makes sense and is is doable in two weeks. I know I'm putting a time box on it, but you know, again, we don't want this to stretch out forever. And if we come up with a grand total of zero, uh, we know we're part <laughs> of the wrong tree. We're not going to come up with zero. <laughs> I know we're not. And if before the meeting in two weeks, people can also send things over the list server if you want to share ahead of time. I can also create a page on the wiki specifically for people to list ideas. What do, what do people helpful. think? Pranub, Sophia, what do you, Jeff, what do you guys think about the, uh, the options that Alicia put out there? Or Andrea, you've been quiet too. I see something actually. No, it sounds good. It's a good plan. Yeah, I think so as well. I mean, I was kind of trying to think how I could contribute. I'm not sure what I can think of anyway. Think think but, of all um, those think of all those trade lands competitors there, Sophia. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the most aren't using blockchain. So yeah. Who knows? Uh, yeah, okay. but I'll happily be a reader and critic. <laughs> okay. Thank okay. you. Um, reading. 
Alicia, I'm, I'm kind of partial to, mm -hmm. you know, putting something on the wiki that people, when they have an idea, they can just put it there. That way we don't duplicate the effort. We, we kind of Perfect. can see what, what's coming out there. Great. So I'll, I'll add a page within our wiki. People will see it over on the left, um, 2023 ebook. Okay. And could you put something out on onto the uh, email list so that people know where to find it? Of course. Thank you. You're welcome. And I suspect this time we will not have the same problems <laughs> with links. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Okay. Good. Uh, what's this? Uh, Post-production, we will need help promoting on social. Yeah, that. thank you. Yes. So we got some some promotion and uh, I guess- The LinkedIn, the Discord, our Twitters. Yes. Mm -hmm. Main channels. Yeah. Um, yeah, and also, you know, when we get uh, inquiries from people uh, from the outside, right, it could sometimes it's students, sometimes it's somebody thinking of experimenting, it's also the thing that we share, right, and that's what we're doing with the CBDC book now as well, right, to sort of also <clears throat> help raise the visibility of the SIG. Yeah, that sounds good. Um, and I guess when you, when you, this is, I'm just thinking out loud here, when you put a, a case here or an example out there, if you could provide a link to that external thing. It could be a YouTube video, right? Where most of our presentations are, or it could be like you know, was, was talked about earlier, if it's some external site here, just having that link, then others can take a gander at it. And mm -hmm. we can say, we can kind of say, oh, okay, here's, here's it. Yeah, this is a top 10. And I, and I don't think we're really necessarily, we're not looking to do 40 or 20, but we're not looking to do, you know, we're not looking to do two. This is, you know, 10 seems to be the right number here, just to get, give you a flavor for things. So if we get, if we end up 11, I don't think any of us are going to sweat. Tomas, Danielle, are we going to sweat it out if uh, we have 11 or 12? I don't think so, right? No. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Good. <laughs> okay. So, I, Good. So, to, so time again on this. So I belong to a bunch of LinkedIn groups that have specialty areas and there's tens of thousands of people that belong to these things. So I could put out a link to one of our YouTube videos, you say, or our, our SIG LinkedIn page, things like that I could put those links in there. Um, you can do that now. And then to Danielle okay. about promo. I mean, once we have this, this piece done, right. We'll, we'll have something even more tangible and more concentrated. To okay. More consumable. I can put that out there. The only problem with it is that LinkedIn, those LinkedIn groups I belong to off of that site are so busy. Um, you got tens of thousands of people posting stuff. And so yeah. you put something up there and then an hour later, you got to scroll down about 40 pages. Yeah. Yeah. You know, they're, they're too active. <laughs> the bane of social media. Yeah. <laughs> the LinkedIn group groups were too successful that these, these were. <laughs> yeah. I, I think, yeah, I think um, <laughs> for right, for right now, focus on finding or, or, developing in your mind what your top three or four case studies are out there. Yeah, and I'm going to be getting input, like Ledger. I mentioned, through that yeah. site. Um, and I'll specify uh, Hyperledger. Some have come in Hyperledger. So I yeah. may have a bunch of them in two weeks. Good. And, and, and but Let me see the quality on them first. Yeah. And to be even more <laughs> specific here, um, it's any using any of the Hyperledger project. It doesn't have to be Fabric. I mean, Fabric is what you hear about a lot. But it can be any of the Hyperledger projects. So if they're using yeah. Firefly, cool. If they're using Besu, cool. I mean, it, uh, it we can use any of them. And it, it'd probably be helpful to have that kind of diversity, right? So they're not all fabric ones out there. I've okay. just created the page for the wiki and posted it to the chat. Man, you're good. <laughs> I try. <laughs> I try. Okay. Beautiful. Um, Let's see here. Any any other questions or thoughts? I mean, that, that's probably. I, I feel like we have a we have a plan here. Thank you for thinking about it, Marina. Thank you for joining today's festivities here, and we look forward to talking with you. And again, we, we can get offline and and share more about DLT and what's going on. And and you'll see some of these success stories as they come through here. And hopefully, that can help you with your invoice uh, financing type of thought. So yeah, it's and, really nice meeting you guys. Yeah. Good. Yeah, sorry I was late. Zoom updated my machine just as I went to click on it and it messed my machine up and I had to fix it. And so it cost me 20 minutes. 
<laughs> no worries. Okay. Any last thoughts? Going once, going twice. Tom, just oh, one wow. thing. So I don't have to, uh, you know, I don't write an email as a follow up. It's not about the ebook. It's just about the Zoom room. Uh, the one that was on the invite was correct, but there, there was a technical issue and it was fixed during the meeting. So right. it's okay to use that going forward, just so you know. Thank you. Cool. <laughs> nice to know. Thanks, Thank Thomas. You. Yeah, Thank sure. You. sure. So we're sure. not we're not crazy here, is what you're saying. That's good. <laughs> that is correct. Or no. technologically <laughs> illiterate. <laughs> okay. Beautiful. <laughs> Thanks, Tomas. Beautiful. Thank Thanks you. everybody for joining. Enjoy your Thank you. uh, Thursday and look forward to seeing you on the 20th and look for some stuff in the uh, wiki mailing list here. And uh, we'll look forward to seeing your uh, everyone's ideas here as they percolate and populate through over the next couple of weeks here. Yep. See Beautiful. you guys. See you soon. Bye. Thank you. Bye, Tom. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.